Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well today. I'm talking in this video about using textures in Luminar 2018. It's something I've been doing for a long time and I've just sort of developed some things I like to do uh, when I'm using textures. Just some tips and tricks and some insights and I hope it helps. And if, it, uh, if you do find it helpful, please like, share, comment, subscribe, that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first couple things I, wanna, I just want to talk about and that is uh, using textures to me is obviously you're sort of entering the realm of art. So you're not looking at something and saying, this is exactly what I saw. You're just creating an artistic interpretation of a scene, which is fun and fine and all that stuff. I love to do it. And so, um, however, my approach is the first thing I do is I continue to m always manage the light first. And so I've talked about that in previous videos, but I want to get the light right because if the light's not looking just right in your uh, your photo, then once you add the texture, it's potentially going to get worse. And so, um, you know, depending on what the texture looks like. So I always like to go in and manage the light first. That's the first thing I do. So I don't start by adding the texture on a new layer and getting going. I actually start with like the AI filter and tone and that sort of thing and, and do that. Um, secondly, I, um, I like to use textures to fill negative space. And so what I mean by that is, if you have a photo that has a lot of negative space, it could be a good candidate for a texture. Now that's not to say you can't use it in other situations, but I find if the photo is really busy, or there's a whole lot of detail and things like that already, textures don't, to me, look as appealing. Just a personal preference, but that's something to think about. Uh, the third is, there's really two ways to do it. You can add a new layer and then grab the, the new image, sorry, add a new image layer and then grab the texture as an image, or you can use the texture overlay filter. I've gotten to where I prefer the texture overlay filter just because you have a little bit additional control, which I like. Uh, the fourth idea or tip, I guess, is uh, mask off your subject matter because uh, you may not want texture to apply to whatever you're focused on. So especially if you're doing a portrait, mask, you know, erase the texture from the person. If you're doing a still life, I generally would erase it or erase it with a, you know, so you just have a really tiny bit of it left, whereas more of the texture would show up around uh, the primary subject. Uh, the fifth idea is uh, once you have your texture uh, on there, on that layer, experiment with it. This would be experimenting with colors or color shifts. This could be enhancing details or actually removing details. This could be desaturating. This could be changing blend modes. This could be changing the opacity or the amount. All of those things I think are really good to do. So you don't just stick a texture on and then start going, right? Or call it done. You, you gotta massage it. And to me, it's the details, the colors, you know, the, the blend modes, the, uh, uh, the opacity, that sort of thing is what helps you get there. Uh, sixth tip is, I generally like to apply a preset after I've got the texture on and looking pretty good. I like to experiment with presets. I've got a bunch of different presets I've made over the years. I got a bunch that are just custom that I haven't released that are color shifty sort of in nature. So I like to stick those on there just to experiment because again, I'm in the realm of art. And so to me, I might do this two or three times, stack multiple presets at different opacities. Um, and it's real easy with the overlay preset button. Just stack those, move the opacity, see what you get, and sometimes you come up with something really cool. Um, and then the last tip is consider a second texture. Um, I do that a lot of times where I'll add a texture to a photo, and then I'll go in after I've massaged it and got it to where I think it's in final form. I'll go stick another texture. Now, the only idea, or not the uh, idea, but the only tip I have when you're doing a second texture is just make sure it's very different than the first one that you did. Because if it's very similar, um, I think you're, you're just gonna end up with more of the same. And there's nothing wrong with it because you chose the texture the first time, so you obviously like it, and it probably looks good on the photo. But if you have too much of that, it sort of overwhelms. So I would look for something completely different, and I'll give you an example of that. So let's get going. Here's uh, the first photo I'm gonna work on. This is a before and after, so this is a Venice photo. Uh, long exposure taken in Venice at sunset, and this is the final where I went for sort of a vintage look. Um, so let me show you that, and then the second one I'm gonna do is this one, and this one I've actually got two textures on. So you can see it's a daytime shot of Neuschwanstein Castle in Bavaria in southern Germany, and I turned it into a kind of a wintry scene with a snowflake uh, falling everywhere and all this stuff. So let's go ahead and get started, and uh, here we go. Okay, so here we go, base layer. As I said, I'm gonna add Accent AI and Tone, and all I'm trying to do is just manage the light a little bit. So I've gotta look at my notes to see what I did, but I went, 
about there on Accent AI, and then I add a little contrast here and a little smart tone, uh, something like that. So the photo has gone from there to there. It's just a brighter, a little bit punchier. I think that looks good. Now I'm gonna go add a new layer. It's an adjustment layer. And I'm gonna go get the texture overlay filter, which is right here in Creative. Okay, so now I'm gonna load a texture. So the first thing you do is you click on that, you go find texture, and I've got this old brown paper texture. Um, I got it on the web for free, it's not mine. Uh, but you can just Google those kind of things if you like that kind of look which I like it. it, it gives a nice vintage sort of flair to the photo. And uh, anyway, uh, that's that. So um, now the texture's on there. One of the things I like about the texture overlay filter instead of just adding a new image layer, because if you add a new image layer, you gotta go adjust opacity to see it immediately because otherwise the layer of the texture covers the entire photo. With the texture overlay filter, you can uh, do things like this where you can swap it around, right? You can just rotate it. Uh, and you can also flip it like that. Now, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is, but I like that in this filter. I think that's really cool. And the other thing you can do is you can zoom. So I could say, well, I really want the texture to come in like that because maybe I want this spot here. And you could also do something different in creative where you actually shrink it beyond the frame. And you could create a photo where you have the texture like that and then your regular edit outside. Now, I'm not doing that. In fact, I'm not gonna zoom at all. Um, I'm just gonna leave it normal, but that's why I like the texture overlay filter. You have a little bit more control. I think it's pretty cool. Um, now, the first thing uh, I wanna do is reduce the amount, and I think I wanna go to about, I gotta check my notes here, yeah, about 32. Um, and so I think that looks good texture-wise. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go add a filter, and I'm gonna get structure, and let me see, I've gotta check my notes here. I'm gonna get tone, and I'm gonna get advanced contrast. And so basically what I'm doing once again is sort of managing the light. So I'm gonna come in here, um, and this is what I talked about earlier about experimenting on the texture layer with details and colors and things like that. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm adding some detail. So as I move this structure, you can see that it gets a bit more gritty looking on the texture itself. There's the texture before and after. I like that. I'm going for that crunchy kind of vintage look, so I think that looks good. And now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna bump up the contrast pretty significantly, something like, maybe like that. I think that makes a really huge impact and I think that looks quite good. I'm gonna take the highlights down because again, I'm still managing the light a little bit. I'm also gonna take the uh, whites down a little bit and I'm actually also gonna reduce the shadows. So something about like that, I think that looks good. And then advanced contrast, I'm gonna add a little bit of that here in the highlights, which is mostly the sky and I'm gonna adjust the balance that way. And sorry, I gotta check my notes here. Uh, and in mid-tones, I'm just gonna bump it up about like that. So there's the before and there's the after for advanced contrast. To me, uh, it doesn't work in every photo. It's not a filter I use a lot, but it worked well here for helping me create the kind of look that I'm going for. Um, and now when I talked about max masking off your subject, because I've I put several filters on this layer, which by the way, I don't always do. Sometimes I'll add the texture layer and then do all this other stuff on a separate layer, but it all kind of worked here, so I went with it. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna get a brush mask on this layer and I'm gonna click erase and I'm gonna shrink my uh, brush a little bit and I'm just gonna erase from these uh, this bit of the building. Now I'm kind of hitting some of these little stumps here uh, and that's okay. Um, I'm just kind of going over that and again, kind of rough. And in fact, I kind of overdid it a little bit. So I'm gonna come back here and paint a little bit back there. So I did a very small amount. You can see what I did, right? Not a big impact, but again, if you're doing portraits, definitely mask them off. Uh, if you're doing other things, you know, pets, still lifes, mask them off uh, substantially, maybe not 100%, but uh, that's that. And so I'm good there. The other thing you could do is experiment with blend modes. You might wanna try different things. Um, you know, it really just depends, right? Uh, you know, to me, blend modes are kind of a crapshoot. You never really know what you're gonna get. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I was just gonna leave it at normal, but I wanted to point that out. This is when I generally experiment with blend modes. And I experiment with blend modes every time I use a texture because I never really know exactly what I'm gonna get. As you use blend modes more, they'll start to sort of be clear about how they're gonna impact the photo, but, um, I just experiment and see what I get. So now I'm gonna add a new layer. It's an adjustment layer. 
And I'm gonna go get a few filters here. And this is where I'm doing a little bit of color work. I'm gonna get split toning. I'm gonna get cross processing and I'm going to get color balance. Okay, so split toning for me, it's just helping accentuate that vintage look. And so what that means is it's gonna be a little bit more of this kind of a yellowy kind of hue uh, around the photo. Maybe something like that. I gotta look at my notes. I don't really know what I did. Um, I think I did about that, but I took the amount down. So before and after just gives a little bit more of that sort of sepia kind of look. Uh, with cross-processing, I'm gonna go grab this Miami and I'm gonna go this way. So it's it's actually a little bit contrary to what I just did with the split toning where I sort of accentuated the yellows to give it more sepia vintage feel. And this cross-processing Miami uh, preset gave it a little bit more blue and a little bit more color, but it's still kind of faded. I think it looks cool. It's almost like a colorized photo that's faded. Um, and then lastly, on midtones, I'm gonna do a little bit more of the blue because I kind of like that look and a little bit more there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing in the highlights, a little bit there, uh, something like that, a little bit in the uh, highlights for the magenta green and a little bit of that. And there you go, um, oops, there's the before and there's the after. So that's a vintage texture look with some detail and light management and then color enhancement. And it really does make a huge impact going from basically a flat, uh, somewhat colorful, but lacking contrast, a little bit too dark sort of image to this after, which is again, artistic interpretation with the uh, uh, you know vintage look as well as the texture and all that, which I think textures, this, this one in particular works well with creating a vintage type look. So that's photo number one. Let me go get number photo two and I'll be right back. Okay, thanks for uh, sticking with me. I'm gonna go get a couple of filters here. I'm gonna get AI, I'm gonna get tone, I'm gonna get vignette, and then black and white conversion. So I'm just gonna do my basic sort of stuff here. I'm gonna boost AI pretty significantly, maybe about like that. Tone, I'm gonna add contrast. I'm gonna reduce highlights. They're really bright, as you can see. And I'm gonna take the whites down. Uh, vignette, I'm gonna add a little bit of that as well something like that and that, just because I'm isolating the subject sort of visually. And then black and white conversion. It converted it to black and white. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast here. So something like that. So let me show you the before and the after. We've made a pretty decent impact. Let's keep going. Next up, I'm gonna add a new layer. So this will be a new adjustment layer. And I'm actually gonna just get a preset. I've got a bunch of presets. Uh, this one's called Deep Blue Goodbye. Um, and it, it just, as you can see, creates sort of a blue look. It's got a few things in it, which you can see here. Most of the work is done in curves and photo filter. Uh, so I'm not gonna bore you by talking about my preset because it's not available uh, yet. I'm probably gonna release these. But anyway, it's a color shift sort of thing. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to create sort of that, what I call moonlight look, kind of a silvery uh, look to the photo. So. Okay, so I'm done with that layer. Now I'm gonna get my texture layer. Now, in this case, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna add a new image layer, and I'm gonna go get this uh, snowflake overlay. Now, this is a snowflake overlay. I just Googled free snowflake uh, texture or overlay or something, and I found this. Um, but here's the thing, it comes in like that, and you're kind of thinking, well, well man, I can't see anything. Even if I reduce the opacity, it's still gonna create a really sort of dark hue. So. All you do is you come to the blend mode and you change it to screen and boom, instantly you have snow. So what screen does, it basically removes the blacks and it keeps the whites and there you go. So my, my snowflake overlay, overlay looks great, right? So I've got a winter scene. So I'm looking pretty good. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna add a new layer, adjustment layer, and I'm gonna get a few filters and let me see what I got on my list. I'm gonna get tone and I'm gonna get dramatic. Ooh, fun. <laughs> Uh, fog. This is uh, me just getting sort of crazy here, people, so bear with me. Image Radiance and Orton. So this, uh, I'm doing a little bit of light management here with the tone filter, but I'm also doing some interesting kind of fun stuff. So let me start with tone. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bump up the contrast uh, about like that. Let's see, uh, shadows are coming down because I'm, I want to do a little darker, moodier. I think that fits with the black and white. I'm actually going to move the highlights up a little bit. And I'm gonna move the, um, the blacks down a little bit. So something like that, just creating a little bit more contrast, which I think is fun. 
Uh, dramatic, I'm going to do about to there. And I think that's it on dramatic. Yep, I think I'll leave that. Um, fog is a pretty cool filter. I don't use it very often. It kind of works in this uh, photo. And I'm going to go with light fog. And I'm going to only go to about there. So I'm just adding a little bit of haze, for lack of a better word. So um, to me, that sort of goes with the snow uh, sort of look that I'm creating. Now, image radiance. Uh, I love image radiance. It gives nice kind of romantic glow, and that's sort of what I'm creating here. I've just got to look at my notes to see what it is I did. Um, so I'm kind of adding some smoothness. I'm dropping the brightness because it is too bright, and I think the shadows are good. So let's see here. There's the before. There's the after. Just kind of smooths it out, creates a little bit dreamy effect, and then now I'm going to use Orton, which I think does a similar sort of thing. So I'm going to go a little bit heavier on Orton. And I'm going to leave softness about where it is. I'm going to leave brightness. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more contrast. Something like that. And now this is where I'd go back here. And I think I'd take the highlights down. Because they're a little too bright. And I might would take the whites down. And so that's the thing I like to do. Is I like to go back after I've applied some other filters. Because they may impact how the photo looks go back and uh, make some further adjustments. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good so far. There's the before, there's the after. Completely different photo, but I'm not quite done. I'm gonna go add a new adjustment layer, and I'm actually gonna add another texture. So this is where I was talking about adding a second texture. Uh, I'm also gonna add black and white conversion again, and I'm gonna, what else am I gonna add? I'm gonna add color balance, and then I'm gonna top it off with a vignette. So. Um, okay, here we go. So let's go with the texture. I'm going to load texture. Now I'm going to go to my texture pack and what do I have? Uh, I think I'm using this one. This is from my texture pack that I sell on my blog. Um, there we go. Now I want to reduce that pretty significantly. So that's coming down to like that. It's just a light amount of texture and I think I'm zooming a tiny bit. Something like that. Now, I'm going to go isolate the subject. So I'm going to hit brush, and I'm going to say erase. And I'm going to erase that texture from the castle, because I don't really need texture on top of the castle. The castle is pretty good already. Um, it's got a, uh, enough texture on it. So I'm just kind of you know doing a sort of a quick job here. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, I did not erase the snowflake texture from the castle, and that's because the snow would be falling in front of the castle from where I'm taking the photo. Uh, but this one, I just don't want the texture really going across here. So I'm just kind of removing some of that and just cleaning that up. Again, just kind of, uh, just clean up, I guess. So there you go. So there's the before. Let's see, there we go. And the after. It's just added a little bit uh, more uh, look to it. In fact, I might take that texture down just a little bit. Um, black and white conversion I, uh, I added and I'm going to add again more contrast I just think it works well to sort of create a little bit more punch um, color balance I'm going to come over here and on the midtones I'm just going a little bit bluer and uh, on the highlights I'm going to do the same kind of thing uh, something maybe about like that I'm going for that silver look but here's something to think about I sort of lost a lot of that when I uh, added the black and white conversion on this layer. So you can come back over here to the blue and just increase the saturation a little bit. And it's creating, a, it's bringing back some of that blue. And so that's my next move. I would go back to black and white and make that adjustment. Uh, and then vignette, really. Just season to taste here on vignette. And there you go. I think I would do something like that. So let me show you the before. Uh, daytime, kind of boring light. And after. Looks like a, a snowstorm, really. And here's a before and after. You think... Um, you can see we made a pretty dramatic difference in the photo. And so that's what I would do. That's multiple layers, a lot of experimentation. Uh, you know, check out blend modes and opacities. Don't forget to isolate your subject by masking it off. Um, and don't hesitate to try multiple textures. This was a snowflake overlay with the, uh, with the different texture added on this layer, this uh, kind of grungy thing. And even though it was green and grungy, that's why I added black and white conversion. Because if I didn't, you'd have that... Well, it's been taken care of. But if I didn't add black and white conversion, the texture would be coming through kind of green and uh, yellow. And I don't want that. I want to keep this sort of monochromatic uh, snow look. And so um, that's why I like to stack filters sometimes with a texture and experiment. So 
Uh, don't hesitate to experiment, but I hope it's fun and helpful. Um, mostly though, I hope you enjoy getting out there and taking photos and editing them and having fun with it. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Like, subscribe, share, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, and then we'll be talking again soon. If I don't, uh, I won't be back here before the holidays. And so have a wonderful holiday. Thank you for watching and take care. Adios.